I have tried very hard to forget everything, and I have succeeded. The only thing that remains to be forgotten is ah, his last moments. I can't stop thinking about it. That was his knife that they used to slaughter him. I remember that knife. His eyes were open when they found his head. It seems he was a witness to his own execution. They had tied his hands. Such cruelty. It would have been easier, probably, had they allowed him to escape. Was it painful, Hans? It must have been. His death was not instant, the doctor who conducted the post-mortem said. That knife wasn't very sharp. They cut him here, and then they left him like that because it didn't go too far. They left him like that and went to sharpen their knives on a rock or something with his neck half open and his eyes looking at them, pleading with them to be quick. Or probably not. He was not the kind to plead. He was a very proud boy. It was the second attempt that killed him. They used all their force to cut to the spine, and then they probably hit him repeatedly to cut to the bone. If I could, I would relive that moment to feel the pain my son went through. Neck. He used it to sing songs. What will he use it for now that it was cut open? To cry? If I could, I would relive that moment to feel the pain my son went through. When I think of him, I think of him even now singing a song. Or at least trying to. Hans Christian Ostro was a young Norwegian theater practitioner and trekker who came to India in the 1990s to study Kathakali and Nortanki Street Theater. His dream was to take these two art forms and weave them together into his Western theatrical experience in Oslo, where he was going to perform his version of the Mahabharat. But sadly, this dream would not come to pass because prior to returning to Oslo, Hans decided to go trekking in Kashmir and never returned. He was kidnapped and beheaded by the Mujahideen who wanted to create a bold statement to the world to take notice of their cause. It was an incident that shocked the world and put India on the map for all the wrong reasons. Hans Christian Ostro was a symbol of the rising turmoil in Kashmir in the 1990s. But why am I sharing all of this with you? Um, before I begin to tell you my amazing journey with this incredible story, I just wanted to ask you, the audience, if you experienced anything while I was sharing this narrative, if you felt anything, if you wanted to do anything after I finished. Because I did. After I heard about Hans's senseless beheading, where he was one of five Europeans that was 
kidnapped, but his was the only body that was found. I wanted to get up and scream, why? What did Hans do to deserve this senseless snuffing out of his life at the tender age of 22? And no, this talk is not a political diatribe or even an attempt to dissect this many-headed political hydra. Rather, it is about the soft power of the stage to generate dialogue and a need for action. Where we as players are not here merely to perform to entertain you or maybe even to um, create discomfort, but rather we as players have a greater responsibility. Broken down further, this performance um, that I just enacted was from a play called Song of the Swan, and it helped me to make sense of this senseless, violent act. Many years ago, two remarkable things happened. The birth of democracy, but a much simpler and cruder form than what we are familiar with today, and the birth of dialogue as an art form. Um, this last was attributed to Thespis, who was considered one of the first people to get onto a stage and perform. But why is this important and what is the connection between the two? So allow me to explain. Thespis recognized the importance of opinion generated through dialogue. And from dialogue came differing points of view, came differing points of view, came conflict, from conflict came drama. And from drama, one was able to engage with a version of the truth. And the very same principle holds true for the foundation upon which a democracy rests. You, the citizenry, have opinions. These opinions create differing points of view. These differing points of view create a conflict. This conflict sometimes creates drama, and from that drama, we are able to ascertain some aspect of what the truth is. In many ways, let me return now to Hans's story. This narrative was based on actual events that was culled from many different sources. Five people that had the extraordinary experience of engaging with Hans in this very brief journey that he had through India. And for all of them, whether it was the videographer who he encountered in Kerala, where he studied Kathakali in this little village for three months, or whether it was the Chaiwala, who met him very briefly before he was kidnapped in Zergibal, Kashmir, whether it was the army negotiator who desperately tried to secure the release of the hostages, whether it was the little village Kashmiri girl in whose house the hostages were held, and finally, whether it was Hans's own mother who helped us understand this beautiful boy's life and his dreams, theirs was a version of the truth. And it was up to us as performers to ensure that this truth, this story, got represented in such a dignified and sensitive way. And this we managed to do. But what we didn't manage to do and came as such a surprise and what we couldn't fathom was the audience's reaction for invariably after every performance, suddenly, spontaneously, somebody would get up from the audience and share how this story touched their lives. And then somebody else would, and somebody else would. Until finally, this avalanche of outspoken expression would force us as a cast to sit down and dialogue with them. And it was this resulting in an um, organic discussion that 
voiced what so many people wanted to share and wanted to say, the senselessness of violence, and why even today, as a nation and as a public, we still resort to violence as a means by which to try and solve problems which perhaps are only a temporary solution. So, Hans was an amazing man. This instance of engaging with the audience actually resonated with me deeply on two instances. But before I share those instances, I wanted to share why would an audience get up and share what they felt? Would it have happened in a movie theater? No. It happened in a theater because theater provides a democracy to sustain itself. Theater is so important for two reasons. It creates a neutral space for you to be able to engage with impassioned, for you to be able to share and feel and dialogue with each other, and for you to be able to feel secure and safe in doing so. And the second reason why the theater is so important for a democracy to sustain itself is because you, when you come in as an individual, you eventually become part of a community. And this community is so important because it, it helps you feel together, it helps you experience together, it helps you share what you want to say. And as Abraham Lincoln boldly states, and this I um, uh, say very uh, lightly with great poetic license, it is, for the people, of the people, and by the people. So this resonated with me greatly on two specific instances. The first was in Bhopal after we had uh, performed this play where I was on my way backstage and um, I was called back to the stage because apparently there was a group of people who wanted to engage with me and thinking they were my friends or acquaintances, I boldly came out only to be met with four total strangers. And without saying a word, each of them came up in turn and gave me a huge hug. But it was not a hug to say thank you. Really, it was a hug to say, you heard us. You provided a platform for which to openly engage in what we have experienced that is so painful and personal to us, and you made it public. And you provided a space for us to crawl into and be nourished. They were a Kashmiri Brahmin family whose ancestors had been sent out of Kashmir. And the second instance where this touched me deeply was, um, and probably the most challenging thing I have yet to face as a theater performer, was I had to become Hans's mother in front of Hans, the real mother, who we had invited to our premiere show. And I remember thinking, just before the curtain went up, what on earth was I going to do as a performer that seemed dignified and real and honest, where I knew there she was, sitting in the audience, watching my every move, my every expression, and being taken back to a time that no mother should ever have to face the horror of your son being decapitated. And I remember thinking, what on earth would I say to her after the performance that didn't sound trite or didn't sound common or didn't sound pedestrian? But I didn't have to worry because after our engagement and after our dialogue with the audience, Hans's mother came up to me. And the other thing that's so incredible about the theater is that it is a great leveler. So she came up to me, and without saying a word, she just opened her arms and engulfed me in a hug that seemed to last for an eternity. And all she said was, thank you. Thank you for 
allowing me to revisit my grief. Thank you for providing a public platform so that people could understand what Hans went through and the senselessness of violence. And in those few words, I recognize the responsibility of a storyteller, that I have to take you, the audience, on a journey with me to become emotional stakeholders, that I have to instill in you the need to go out and dialogue and to create a sense of purpose. It has been such an honor for me to be part of this tribe, this community, this family, to be called an actor. And the responsibilities of an actor are so great because we owe it to you, the audience, to engage you, to entice you, to entertain you, and yes, maybe even to enrage you. And to do it with a sense of sensitivity and emotion and intellect. And um, what is so also extraordinary is what Eustace, uh, sorry, Oscar Eustace, the legendary artistic director of the Joseph Papp Public Theater emphatically stated that the need for theater is as important as people's desire for food and drink, and that artistry is not a possession of the few, but rather artistry is inherent in us being a human being. So I ask you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as you leave this hall and you next engage with a theatrical experience, how will you engage with it? The space, the experience, the narrative. And being the optimist that I think I am, I hope that you, like Thespis, will go out and create a sense of dialogue and a purpose and play your role in the democratic process. Thank you very much. Thank you.